Yo, what's everyone? I'm back again with another tutorial. Today we'll be doing some house music with Ableton stock plugins only. Let's get right into it. Before we get started, let's do a playthrough so you know what you're sticking around for. Let's get it. First things first, let's hit up the drums because that's my favorite part about making music is the drum programming. In this case, we got a 909 core kit which comes with your copy of Ableton. Go to your drums, 909 core, drag it into a MIDI channel and start hammering away on your drums. For house music, you got your traditional four on the floor kick. So pretty easy to program, um, hi-hats on every other upbeat. And in this case, I actually pushed it back slightly. If you zoom in, you can see that it's not on the grid right here. And what you do is you select everything by clicking on the channel right here. And then by pushing command and right, you get to push it back a little bit and command left to bring it back on a Mac. I don't know what the shortcut is on a Windows, but it's probably control. So real music to get effective grooves in your hi-hats just so it doesn't sound really robotic and programmed so I highly recommend doing it and we got our claps on the two and four very very traditional house so moving forward we got the chords so like I mentioned before this is an Ableton stock plugin only tutorial so everything is from Ableton um, we got some soft chords which I pulled from the simpler I got the grand piano, which I pulled also from the simpler or sampler, I forgot. And we got the lightly tread treading, which is also Ableton stock. So shout out to Ableton stock. You know, don't sleep on what we got because there's a lot of stuff to start with. You don't need advanced VSTs like Serum, Massive, Reactor, you name it. Like It's cool to have it, but you really don't need that much to get started, so I highly recommend spending some time going through all these different categories and instruments, impulse, instrument rack, operator, like there's so many different things to explore. So don't sleep on Ableton stock. It's awesome. Yes! And because it's Ableton stock, you can download the tutorial, project file, and get everything going without any hassle. So that's a short plug. The next thing I did was instead of writing out chords, I used the MIDI effects chord. You can't see it, now you can chord which is awesome for generating chords without thinking about what you need to do um, obviously you need to program it correctly so if you look at my grand piano channel right here I got this chord setting um, it creates a nice minor extended chord which I use a lot in house music so you can copy the settings right here screenshot it or just download the file and you'll have it there so it's a quick way to generate chords, especially if you're just doing house music like this. Like you don't really need any significant chord progressions. You just need some sort of rhythmic element that can change, but also makes sense. So if you follow along my MIDI, I only change one note. I go from F minor to a G minor. So it just creates a little bit of tension in the progression and then it leads into the next section. So if you just give it a little listen here. I'll play the whole thing, sorry. All 
All right, so it gets a little funky because I uh, have some automation on the effects, but if you explore the lightly treading step divider right here, um, you can figure it out yourself. Just go in and play around with it. And moving from the chords, we next have our effects section. Um, not too much effects going on right here. The only effect in hell. <laughs> There's a fire truck going, but the effects in this song are just a crash cymbal, a swoosh, a white noise, and some drums building up. So if we listen to that section, we got this. Okay. So I stress a lot about transitions because to me, transitions are literally one of the most important things for your song to have cohesive parts. So without having risers, crashes, impacts, and little fills, the song sounds kind of bland. Like I honestly like songs that have effects. It doesn't have to be really in your face, but it just has to be there in the background where you can feel the song moving from a section to the next section. And it provides a nice break and it, it blankets the song in a way that it supports the entire story. So highly recommend diving into effects and learning how to use them properly. Moving forward, we got the bass line going on over here. It's a repetition of the note F. And I'm having it with the syn syncopated melody and a little variation at the end of the loop. So that way people don't fall asleep listening to your bass line because you don't want people falling asleep. You want people to dance. So if we give it a little solo right here. which is followed from the beginning of this section. And as you can see, I got some automation going on on the filter decay. So this just has the bass sound evolving over time. So again, the last thing you want is people falling asleep to your bass line. So give a little variation, you know, automate a filter, automate the volume, automate something. Like automation is really key in dance music. So don't forget to change things up and keep the groove moving. In terms of the side chain, I have two different side chains on my bass. I typically do this because I like the sub to have a much steeper duck. So the settings right here shows you that I'm having it duck to negative 53 dB on the threshold at a 6.53 ratio. These numbers are arbitrary, like it's all test based and like I don't only follow one type of sidechain for every song. Um, most of the time the, the attack is always at 0 0.01, like that's never gonna change for a, a sub and kick sidechain, at least for me. I'm never gonna do like a 10 millisecond because then your sub and the kick are hitting at the exact same time and that literally doesn't make any sense. So on the sub, go deeper, higher ratio. On the lighter sound, I have it at a two. And even though the, the threshold is a lot deeper, because the ratio is only at two, it allows the sound to come back into the mix a lot faster. So typically for higher end stuff, I sidechain less. That way it doesn't lose the characteristics that you want, especially like a stab or another element that needs to be hitting on the first note. So a little tip that I use. Moving on to the vocal section, um, you know every house song, you gotta talk about house music. I love my house music! So I picked out this random sample from Splice, it's free, zero credits, so go to Splice, look up this uh, sample pack, I'll have it somewhere over here, and go download it, go nuts, it's all about the house music, as they say. So this is from Splice, let's give it a listen. So it is very traditional for people playing house music to talk about how much they love house music. So that's why I thought this was a perfect sample. And in terms of the Vox layer, I just chopped up some random things that I also found on Splice. So it doesn't really need a crazy dialogue or anything. It just needs to have some tonal characteristics and a melody so people can nod their head to it. So if you listen to the vocal layer, this is what I got. <laughs> Yeah. 
So pretty simple, but all you need is a syncopated melody that follows along with the rest of the song and that's pretty much it. So last but not least, um, this is my master chain for default Ableton projects. Um, typically I use a Fab Filter Pro L2, but for stuff like this, um, you can actually get the mix to sound pretty good. So I will use a EQ, Ableton Stock, um, oversample it so that it has a little bit more precision on your EQ. And it's a little bit harder on your CPU, but honestly it's Ableton Stock, so it's not that bad. Um, I roll off the size at about 170, 190, like it's it's all, you know, it's all random depending on the song, but typical rule of thumb is around this area because you don't need any of that sub in your uh, mono range. And then I have a multi-band compressor um, tuned up to about 58, it just kind of levels off the different levels coming in. And then our best friend glue compressor, which is freaking amazing, you should always use glue compressor. It basically brings all your different dynamics and you get to nicely put it together in a song that hits super hard in a club or in your car or off your laptop speakers, wherever the hell you want it. So always use a glue comp. And another thing that I always use is the Voxengo Span. This is literally one of the best free plugins. So go get Voxengo Span. Don't use Ableton Spectrum. I think it's garbage. I've never once had a good experience with it. Maybe if you do, let me know in the comments below. But for the most of it, Voxengo Span is my boy. So I use this. And with all this together, this is what we got.